Hi, today I will demonstrate how you can use your G Suite account to log into Windows 10 Professional, Business or Enterprise Edition devices. Except free all other G Suite editions are supported, if you are using G Suite Enterprise Edition you can not only log into the devices but you can additionally manage Windows 10 devices like you would manage mobile devices. In this demo we will use G Suite Enterprise Edition and show management features as well. First, I will start Windows 10 Enterprise Virtual Machine installed in VirtualBox and log into the machine as a local user with administration rights. In order to enable G Suite accounts to log into the Windows 10 device Google developed Google Credentials Provider for Windows, GCPW in short, application that administrators have to install and configure. Once installed there are many possibilities to allow one or more G Suite users to log into the device. One of requirements for GCPW installation is that Chrome browser is already installed so we will proceed and install Chrome browser. Additional benefit of installing GCPW is that Chrome browser will be automatically logged into the G Suite account of the Windows user through the single sign-on. After installation of Chrome browser we can check the version to verify that it is 81 or later by clicking About Google Chrome. After we verify the Chrome browser version we can proceed to download and install the GCPW tool from Google Tools. GCPW comes in two versions, 64-bit and 32-bit, and requires Windows Professional, Business, Enterprise or Education version 1803 or later. In order to select the proper version I will press Windows function key plus letter I to open the Windows settings dialog. Under System we have to click About and under System Type we will find that it is a 64-bit system. Scrolling down to Windows Specifications we will find Edition and Version information. We are good to go download and install the 64-bit version of GCPW tool. It is fairly easy to install, after downloading we have to start installing and approve installation, after a few seconds GCPW should be installed. Configuration of GCPW can be done through Registry Editor or PowerShell command line. In our case we will run PowerShell as administrator to make necessary configuration. There are a number of optional registry entries and only one mandatory that restricts device sign-ins to accounts in specific domains. Under the key Domains Allowed to Log In, you must provide a comma-separated list of G Suite domains that will be allowed to log in. If you are not using G Suite Enterprise you should also disable automatic enrollment that is supported only by G Suite Enterprise Editions. You can also prevent multiple G Suite accounts login to ensure only one G Suite account can use a device. It is possible to link G Suite accounts to existing Windows profiles, by default a new Windows profile will be created when a G Suite user logs into the device for the first time. Lastly, it is possible to specify how long a device can be offline before the user needs to sign in to their Google account online. For the purpose of this demo I will copy and paste the PowerShell commands from GCPW documentation to configure domains allowed to log in and provide G Suite domain name demo.meadria.us since I will use G Suite user Maladin at demo.meadria.us to log into the Windows 10. You can automate the whole process with the script or use a registry editor to do it manually through graphical user interface. Now that we are ready to log into the Windows 10 with G Suite account for the first time we can go to G Suite Enterprise Admin Console to set up management of Windows 10 devices. On the Admin Panel home screen we click Devices to see Enrolled Devices and set up options for device management. Since we are using G Suite Enterprise we have an additional Windows settings option that is missing in Business and Basic Editions. Under the Windows settings we have to enable enhanced desktop security in order to allow for Windows 10 device enrollment. We can optionally configure Windows user administrative privileges, Windows update settings and encryption as well as Windows custom settings available through Open Mobile Alliance Uniform Resource Identifiers, the same are used by Microsoft Intune, instead of using legacy group policy. There is a short list of common custom settings for Windows 10 devices you can use as a reference for configuring settings. One simple setting under Personalization enables us to set desktop background image by specifying URL of the image that will be displayed. There are many more settings available and a comprehensive list is available through Autocomplete, for example you can see VPN-related settings by typing VPN under keyword search for Open Mobile Alliance Uniform Resource Identifiers.
We are now ready for the first time G Suite account login that will automatically enroll device and provide a single sign on to Chrome browser. If you do not use G Suite Enterprise Edition you can skip previous management configuration task and just disable device enrollment by using optional GCPW configuration, in our case we will just reboot and we are ready to log in with the G Suite account. After reboot you will be presented with the Add Work Account option for login with G Suite User Account. Selecting that option will start the G Suite login process using G Suite Account Username and Password. For initial sign-in using GCPW, user must have an internet connection. Additional benefit is that if you have two-step authentication enabled for your G Suite account it will give you additional protection for your Windows 10 device. Since this is the first time login process and we didn't link the existing Windows profile to this account, a new Windows profile will be created on this device. Creating a new Windows profile will take a minute or so. Newly created Windows profile will be linked with the G Suite account we used to log in so the next time we log in process will be much faster. In the meantime we can take a look at G Suite Enterprise Admin Console and check for newly enrolled devices. Immediately after first login and accepting terms, a new Windows 10 device is enrolled and automatically approved. We can see basic information including operating system version, first and last time when device synced and number of actions we can perform. We can email the user, we can force log out, unenroll or delete device from management or initiate device wipe that will reset Windows 10 installation and wipe out corporate data on that device. If we click on the device name we will get more information about the device. Information about every management sync event for a specific device is available under View Audit Info. In that report we can see all sync events including actions that were applied on the synced device. Let's jump back to the Windows 10 device. A new profile is created and the user can now set Windows privacy options and proceed to the desktop. Starting Chrome for the first time will automatically sign in the G Suite user and offer linking Chrome data to the user G Suite account. After linking the data to the user G Suite account Chrome will be automatically signed in. We can now check G Suite user account settings from the Chrome browser. In the future when user opens Gmail it will not be asked to log in since a single sign on with Windows 10 device is established. To check Windows 10 username we can open PowerShell and type in CLI command to display actual username, sasa underscore demo dot meadria and check that the user is treated as a local Windows 10 user. To show experience after first signing in with the G Suite account is done, let's restart Windows 10 device. Since by default GCPW allows multiple G Suite users to sign in and we didn't set registry options to prevent that, the Add Work Account option is still present but the G Suite account we used for the first login is default choice and we just have to enter password. After we enter password two-factor authentication is not required this time since we are logging from the same PC and IP address, in the future there will be two-factor authentication requests after some time or if we change location to ensure security like with the normal G Suite account login. When we start Chrome we can see that we are already logged in as the same Windows 10 user and we do not have to log in again. This concludes our demo of adding single sign-on and Google sign-in security to Windows devices. Yes, I know that at one point you saw the screen in Croatian language in Chrome browser and that I said that I will be logging in as Mladen and I logged in as Sasa, but from the technical standpoint the demo was very carefully screened and we hope you liked it. If you have any more questions or you would like Miadria's help in setting this up for your company please contact us and we will get back to you. Also you can take advantage of our office hours on Friday where you can sign up and get one-on-one -on -one time with our team. Thank you for watching the Usewise video, we will see you soon. Have a great day.